but they will not race. Whereas if I okay, Ugh. yeah, buddy, if you have a straight, you have a straight. Let me see. Nah, I he could also still have all the sets. Or six suited. Hmm. Actually, I think I'm going to call mainly to try to keep Jeffy Boy in. Oh, but then I lose value from that guy. I'm going to do three. I have some big news, my fellow ambitious poker players, because the doors to our mechanics of poker program are closing. They are closing because behind the scenes we have been working hard on the 2.0 version of the mechanics which next to more content also will include more personal attention and a more exclusive community which means that we will only take on a small group of players who fit the profile. This means that right now is your last chance to guarantee a seat in one of the most complete poker coaching programs out there, which will help you break free from low to mid stakes and help you reach high stakes poker games. Throughout the month of July, we are running our first and most likely last promotion ever, a 25% off closing sale on the Mechanics of Poker program. And if you enroll now, you will get lifetime access to all the updates, including all the goodness that is coming up in the Mechanics of Poker 2.0. So grab this opportunity before the doors are closed and let us help you realize your poker goals. Go over to pokerambition.com to enroll. Edmund Russell from Ireland. This hand could actually do a couple of things. I go for a check call. But he didn't bite. Gonna go for a delay check raise. Not biting. I think in the river I'm gonna go for a check call. I think he's gonna show up with a lot of ace highs here on the river that are not really going to call a bet, but they could bet themselves. Maybe as an under pair or like a random 3 4 suited. Get ace 3. Pocket eight, easy bet for straight two recreationals. We're gonna be quite loose. <laughs> Got a full pocket trees, even though there were three recreationals behind, but two of them were with 40 BB. Here on the turn, I'm gonna. This is not really solver approved, but I'm going to be splitting. Because I think people here are quite white. And I want to still bet quite a lot for protection slash thin value. So for example, let's have pocket fours there, pocket sevens. Still want to bet. So I'll create a strategy around a small sizing and a bigger sizing. The bigger sizing then would be probably three quarters or so. Here, if I would never check raise this, if you would start check raising, you want to probably have a spade with your hand. The nine. How big? Now I forgot how big he bet it. He continues blocking, I think is a good strategy. Should actually probably still defend this, but I think the way people use the construct sucks. I think with a king at queen nine. Queen nine is definitely full check nine. Check nine, I do have a better hand though. This is probably a call. Yeah, so don't 
Then what are you waiting for, Wetko? And folding her with the nines. On an ace-high flop. Okay, he better the worst hand. That's interesting. I don't think that's a bad on the turn from his side. He had queen nine. And then when he finally made the best hand, he decided to check. A lot of people call eight. Not an eight. Everyone checks. These guys are going to be quite wide, especially. So I will have more hands to get value from. So I actually just decided to go for a small bet here. Because these guys will show up with more hands like king 5 suited, queen 5 suited, ace 5 offsuit. The only guy I'm worried about is initial razor. I think I want to check the river. And go for a check raise. Kind of the same concept earlier with the kings. I think there's going to be a lot of hands that will call my bet. But they will not raise. Whereas if I... Okay. Ugh. Yeah, buddy. If you have a straight, you have a straight. Let me see. Nah, he, he could also still have all the sets. Or six suited. Hmm. Actually, I think I'm going to call mainly to try to keep Jeffy Boy in. Oh, but then I lose value from that guy. One, two, three. Uh... Okay, interesting. So, that was an interesting spot. <laughs> I did have enough time to figure that out, but I guess it uh, it worked out well. Uh, so, like always, things have benefits and downsides. I'll fold the king jack of spades here versus under the gun range. It's quite close though. Versus one third. So I was quickly counting in my head, and if he has four six suited, ace four suited, that that makes eight straights. Sets would make up for nine. If he would, he would play it that way. But I think threes and deuces are likely to bet the flop more often than a gutter. If you're a recreational. So. You could say that. I mean, obviously. Make it very clear. We cannot fold. I was debating if re-raising and getting the extra money would be worth it. The benefit of call. Let's say I jam. Jeffy Boy is just going to fold a set. Whereas if I call, Jeffy Boy always calls a set. So that's... Or at least I assume he's going to call a set and not hero for the set. Again, here the small sizing on the low pair board. It should probably get upsized. And turn this as close if you want to go bet, bet or check. I think actually we should go bet, bet. Now I'm going to check behind a loser versus ace high. Or aces. That's why you bet one third. Sneaky ass motherfucker. So yeah, I think, call, I think calling there with the eights is a bit more plus. If you think king queen here on the turn, I should have thought about it a little bit more. I was going to play the river. Um, again, we were facing a one third bet on this texture. It shouldn't happen all that often. Aces which is the hand that he had. Definitely bets from benefiting small. So usually when people bet small on this board, I get a little bit suspicious. Um, you can actually see that king, queen off is just mainly a fold, which I was actually quite surprised by. So maybe I'm overcalling in this spot, especially if I think... So it, actually, this doesn't make much sense. I'm suspicious of the one third, but it's still call. So that's probably something I'm doing wrong. Nine checks. King, queen, off. Yeah, it's mainly betting. So I got this wrong. And I already thought I got it wrong in game, right? Uh, this hand probably just wants to bet, bet. Because he's now going to call with a lot of king, queen with a heart. Okay, he's actually raising ace, queen with a heart. A lot of hands with a heart now are going to call. 
for blocking kings and queens. So I think this hand now just wants to blast off. So let's say reverse it then. I have king queen off. It's interesting. He wants to bet with the heart. But I figured that would block more of villain's faults. And I think actually in practice it does. I think people will check all more ace queen with a heart and barrel more hearts themselves. So. Yeah, I don't think I played this, this hand very well. I think if it does go check, check, a river is a five. It's like, yeah, check and lose. Seems like an okay strategy. No, it just wants to bet quite often. That's interesting because small blind is actually checking, giving up here with king, jack, jack, queen. So we will actually win at showdown quite often. Queen 10, jack 10. I don't think not bluffing here in the river is that big of a mistake. I think not betting the hand on the turn though, I think could definitely be a mistake. Luckily, I didn't go bad bet, else we would have lost another stacky. But I do think bad bet would have probably been the best play. Don't have a great hand to bluff. I do think, though, the spot is okay. What is he going to do with 9s and 8s? If he's not careful, that's quite a big part of his range. He should probably bet 5s on the flop, so the 5 doesn't really do much. The set, he could check 7s though, so that's why the 7 isn't great. Um, but hey, clubs is still better than spades there, for example, on the river, as he's most likely to just bet a flush draw himself on the turn. And I just think the way people construct their ranges... Leaning towards the bet there more often on the river than not is probably going to make you money. Now, I'm not giving much credit to my opponent, but sorry, Mr. Joe Black, if you're watching. <laughs> hmm. Was this a mixed click or is this a strategy? I'm going to go for... This is his strategy. Uh, this, is, this is just a misclick. I think we should just come over the top. And then play sort of a single race pot. I guess it's going to be very... Pocket pair heavy. This is a very good flop for me. Not only because... I have top pair, but also in terms of his range is going to be a lot of fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines. And I'm kind of reducing a lot of the, the strong parts of his range. Because I've, like I said, we're, we're basically playing an inflated pot versus a face up range. Or at least, unless he misclicked that he wanted to three bet, for example. That, uh, that could obviously also be the case. Here on the turn with sixes, we can actually do a couple of things. I'm going to go for a barrel here. I think this sizing, this is probably the sizing that achieves what I'm desiring. And river easy check back. And we got two nice streets of value. And yeah, he's fucked on that board. Basically, after what happened on the deuce, made a big bet. I think here, uh, I mean, I made, yeah, qu quite a big bet. I think that's good on a deuce. Whereas on when we had the kings on the jack three three ten, I made a bit of a smaller bet. And leave your comments down below to explain us the difference. Why did I bet three quarters on the three jack deuce deuce? Where three quarters was a very big bet you compare it to the SPR that we were playing. And the other spot I betted three quarters while it was not a big bet compared to the SPR that we were playing.
don't want to give away everything, right? I'm gonna, gonna make you guys think a little bit for yourselves as well. Else, what's the fun? Just gonna make a small bet there with my gutter versus recreational and go from there. Don't really want to check and then have him maybe bluff me. I think he's just gonna fold this under pairs. I think on the turn I'm gonna make another bet because we have a gutter. Snap calls, board pairs. Now he starts thinking about it. That's always a bad sign. And I'm gonna make a fold. I think on the turn we just put quite a lot of pressure on ace nine offsuit, for example. If he calls, we still have a gutty. And we block some of the calling range as he has. If he has the king himself, like pair plus gutter, he will always call. Only downside of betting is that he would sometimes race and then we fold the gutter. Probably if he raises, he's going to have a 10 a lot. So then we didn't have much outs anyway. I might try another step actually here with the king 10 some of the time. The king 10 specifically, I think it's an okay bet. And now, now he's going to be like, dude, you don't have a 10. And then I suddenly do have a 10. Very disguising this. The mirror is now like, dude, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, I know. Man. I know. It's very unlikely to have a 10, right? So he's actually very likely to be drawing, in my opinion, or he has a worse 10. I think the only, the only option here is just call. It's a good river in terms of his draws were not completed. Let's say he was making a little bluffy bluffy with a five. He now also has a boat. Come on, don't make this a boring hand that you just show up with a 10. That would be, uh, that would be a bit stupid. Oh yeah, he thought I didn't have a 10. Surprise, surprise, I did have a 10. Feel the power. You feel my power, baby? Feel my power. You guys, sometimes it's good to have the hand that your opponent doesn't think you have. This is another reason why, for example, a solver would always try to have a little bit of everything in all lines. So basically he would not get in a very high EV spot there on the turn where I never have a 10 and he always has a 10. Not saying that that is the reason that I bet, but it does play a part. Um... But... Got a small raisey here. Go for an overbet here. But the quite the real question now, people are like, yeah, wacko. I can also call river shelves and boats. The real wacko, the real, the real the real question would be what would we have done if we were betting King Queen? Interesting question. And probably the answer to that question is we would probably have called the one the ones with the flush draw. Because he's likely to I think if queens, I would be more inclined to check. But jacks, I think I'm okay with betting. 
He can probably fold nines. He can probably fold tens on the turn. So that's definitely beneficial. He can definitely check back his queen, his king. That we could call with. What the fuck is going on? You have to be joking. I mean, I'm trying not to be negative, but goddamn fucking whore. Okay, wait. We're quite deep, actually. This is something you should have taken in consideration, Wacko. This probably checks, changes his check back range. Could we just be dead here? He checks back. For example, kings or queens. Now, also makes it absurdly big race sizing. The fuck is going on here? Luck. I have a feeling I need luck. This is weird. This is very weird. Very weird. Very weird. Seventh? So we bet here for protection ish a bit thin. I think the way people usually construct their ranges, I think this is fine. Okay, I'm just gonna fold. I have no fucking clue what's going on here. I actually already felt like folding the turn versus the more than three quarters pot race sizing. Let's get funky with the five fours. Especially, I think, on, on 200 and L, I think these, these type of spots are just... Yeah, they are kind of what they seem, even though they seem like I don't know what they seem. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Weird hand. But, I mean, we have straights, we have flushes, we have sets, we have... I mean, we call them... We call the under-the-gun 3-bat. And then we bet the turn, a pretty connected board. Then he raised and we called the race. So now we at least have two pair. And now he's going to 200% the river. Yeah. Sounds, sounds, sounds pretty greedy to me. Could sometimes check race here. Let's, let's do it this time. Flush turn, that's the... And probably going to blast this off. I think he still can call... I think he's still going to overcall with hands like ace, jack, ace, queen, ace, king on the turn. He could still have king, queen with a diamond, king, jack with a diamond, jack, queen with a diamond. Um, yeah. And I don't think this is a spot where even a recreational is very happy with his ace. Incredibly strong and aggressive play. But yeah, I think the 200% bet on the river is just a bit too greedy from him. And the turn race, in my opinion, already a bit greedy. I, I, I think, I, I honestly think we could make an argument for folding the turn. Because if the board pairs and he has a flush, is he really... In these knit formations where I bet... Is he really still going to bet the river? So I don't think we have a lot of implied odds. Let's say river is a queen or a king. And they just have queens or kings. We lose our stack. And we're quite deep. So... I think... To be honest, I think calling the turn there to fold the river is a mistake. And probably just a red line killer. Oh, we've been flocking quite a lot of sets. So, let's do it again. 
Nope. I'm just going to try to bring the Ace Queen to showdown. Um, fours, fives, stuff. Goal sixes uh, is a bit close actually already, I would say. P1 hoping for I don't know what. We block one of the A6 suited. I'm gonna fold there with. Yeah. Don't have a heart. Spots are really annoying. Don't have a heart. We block one A6 suited. Uh, we don't block 5 4. We should probably have races on the turn. Wacko. We have races on the turn. One, nine, ten of hearts. One time. King, ten of hearts. I should have races on the turn. So we have another spot where we are the caller in position facing a three bet. This is actually one of the spots that I'm least comfortable with. A spot that I'm currently studying a little bit more. So no surprise that a lot of the doubts that I had were around this position. So he starts off with a small bet, which he can basically do with range. Let's see if he bets 33, if six has become close. No, never close. So he bets 20%, I call. Turn is the ace of hearts. He's going to continue blocking, which he's going to do quite often. Um, he can actually not go that relentless. So this is actually, I think, I think it's a spot where it's very easy to overdo it with, for example, I had like 9, 10 suited. Um, I think that would make us lean more towards calling. But I also talked about the raising. We see actually deuces raising. Okay, deuces is nothing. Three is raising. So raising here actually with sixes is not really a thing, it looks like. But even seeing this, I still think it's actually not a bad play. Actually, but they're going to bet these hands more often as well. So apparently, actually, we played the hand pretty standard from a GTA perspe GTO perspective. Yeah, we check behind the river. He gave up his king 10, which I assume is going to be the case. King 10 has heart. Yeah, he's giving up. So, okay, the hand was way less interesting than apparently I thought. And that's, like I said, probably because this spot is a spot that I think I'm worse at. Um, but I do actually. Yeah. Great analysis, Wacko. Great analysis. Give us more. Give us more. The hand wasn't played very well, but we still won the money. Why poker? Such a weird game. Half pot bet here from our opponent on ace, ace, four, three, rainbow. No fucking clue this guy is. The bad river. We could probably make a small race here. Eh. Just accept. River River isn't the greatest. River isn't the greatest. Make a small cold four bet here. I think this just works well with our range. Basically, the smaller cold four bet you make, you could even go 12. Uh, the more we can cold four bet. Now we have an easy fold. And then when this happens, you know, you just lose less point. Ooh. 
with the weaker part of your range. So I think we could have even went smaller. Like I said, 12. From a strategical perspective would have probably been better. Uh, when a river pressed the board here on the 4, I'm not going to overbet. I would have overbet 7, for example. I'm going to rebat here with the a6. He does mirror, so I could also elect to call, but I think he's a recreational player, and then I just prefer to rebat a little bit more. So me falling deuces and fours, even though there was a recreation on the big blind. The problem though with the properties that pocket deuces has, which is it doesn't block any of the three bet ranges behind me, is that yes, obviously if we open in the big blind calls is a recreational play, we're gonna make more money. But the problem is given the fact that we have deuces, the people behind us will have hands that are going to three bet more often. Could uh, actually three bet this, but we're quite deep, 240 big blinds, so. Definitely lean less towards three betting in general. Um, ace king. We are blocking the ace king. However, I think ace king, if we go check raise bet bet, is gonna be a bluff catcher. So I would much rather check raise seven, eight, seven, six, seven, five type of hands that have vector straight draws. And that kind of are not blocking hands that he's probably supposed to fold by the river. Very big sizing. Or this texture. Actually, it's okay. It's on the bigger side, that's for sure. Under the gun versus big big blind. Yeah, so actually in the beginning of the video I talked a little bit about deep. Well, three Playing a lot of big three but pots or trying to build a lot of big pots out of position when you're very deep is probably not a great idea. So therefore, I've we read a bit less. And it's the same here again with the pocket deuces in the small blind. Yes, you know, you can call. And if you see, in general, if you see a flop, it's going to make you money. However, given the fact that we have two deuces, the big blind is just going to squeeze the shit out of us. Killer. Rainbow Broadway XX board. Got a bit of one third. Plus two tone, I would probably check. Depending on my suits. I think jacks, I would have just checked in general. Check nine here. We don't have a heart, so I'm not gonna check raise this. Six back. Pink. I think this fine hand for an overbet. I think we can overbet quite some queen x here.
I would not overbet here with a gutter. King Jack can also sometimes check. And on the river, I think that not having a heart and not having an ace is probably good, so I'll go for the overbet again. Not having a king. Yeah, I think this is just this is just the perfect hand to, to bet twice with. Let's say you did check back queen nine or queen jack. He has an easy call. And let's say you did check back a flush draw or turned something like ace ace four. Or yes, ace king or ace jack. It's most likely folding. Though I guess ace king. Ace king with a heart could maybe call. A little bit deeper here, so I'll make it a little bit bigger. Don't pay too much attention to, I guess, the color tags of the regs here. I guess I have not really played with them. Tense. I think I'm gonna lean towards folding because the the cold four bed range contains a lot of the cards that I need to. For example, it's a spot where let's say I had three bed box sixes. I would much rather call that because then he doesn't have the cards that I need to improve. And also, then if I flop something with my pocket sixes, oh, everyone is in aces against kings. Uh. Then if I do improve with pocket tens, let's say it's king, queen, nine, uh, he will have a lot of my outs in his hand or in his range. And also, let's say I then do turn a straight, he can still sometimes have kings, queens, so then I again need to dodge, uh, dodge another bullet, so that's not great. So that's right, a little through right here. Jack six, why the not? Uh, wait, you bet. I have to be a bit careful here. I think I want to raise a bit more polar, not too linear. Yes, I definitely don't want to raise full this hand, so I'll just go for a call. Yeah, he's very enthusiastic. I'll show him the six. I want to show, show a card. Okay, yeah, GG. Probably a recreational player. Good thing that we didn't raise the flop. Like, you might get triggered there if people lead into a board that's yours to just race, but... And let's say we had Jack 10. Jack 10... Was Jack 10 a gutter? That's a bad example, yeah. Let's say we had Queen 10 of clubs or something. Raising, perfectly fine. Because then if he re-raises, it's, yeah, whatever. But now it would kind of suck. Don Juan! Don Juan. I'm not gonna fuck with Don Juan. When in position, cold calls, and the board connects a little bit between the 6 and the 9th, particularly, so like it did in this case. Uh, I'm going to open here with the 6 of suited, simply because there's 3 recreationals, and they will do way less 3-betting, usually, and then you got 3-bet. Uh, so they will do less 3-betting, and actually, if they 3-bet, they 3-bet to a smaller sizing, so we get to see more flops. He checks. He's gonna check. The bad turn. He now goes for a delayed overbet. Quite funky. We don't block any of the the nine X. Let's see, we had ace and a heart there or something. I guess that would we could consider to be a hero call. I think I'm gonna call the turn here simply because his bet's so small. And I think if we hit a seven or a six and he has aces or ace king, we win a lot of money. Pair baby. Uh, 
text. Yeah, let's hope for Ace Jack. Jacks. I'm gonna go for a check call here. Check again. I would have definitely check raised Ace Eight, for example, or King Eight or Nine Tens. But I think having the Six and the Eight is just less hand to get value from. He bets again. I think we have an easy call again, and probably this hand will not lead much to anything. Simply because, yeah, again, we have a 6 and an 8. 9 is not great. Was not great in general, right? He could have 5, 7, 10, 7. He can now also have made jack 9 and 9, 10. So actually, I think I'm going to lean towards holding, but I already know. It's probably not what I'm going to do. Good luck. Yeah. But yeah, obviously not, not, not the greatest of runouts with the 9 pairing and a, and a flush completing. But I still think 6-8, uh, for example, is a way better bluff catch on the, than, for example, if we had jacks, queens, these type of holdings, assuming that he's not value betting a worse 8. Uh, it's not value betting ace eight or something. Which I don't think he is. So yeah, I think six eight. Just kind of has to call and lose often. I would have there, for example, also check raised the bottom set. And probably actually also the middle set. And why I do check raise a set because yeah, set is simply a better hand than two pair. For example, in the exact runner that we now had, if he had 9-10, we would have made a boat on the river and he would have made trips. And now we get counterfeited. So would have check raised bottom set always, middle set usually, and top set probably not. I usually open a bit bigger when there's a recreation on the big blind and I'm on the button. However, these recreationals here on Zoom, they usually play quite tight. So actually, I think maybe just opening way more and opening smaller is... On a Zoom table, maybe a better adjustment. I think in a rec game table, I prefer to open bigger. And we can do that again because they're not rebanning that much. Uh, here you can play two strategies or two types of strategies. I prefer to raise a little bit smaller and raise a little bit more. I would change to a bit more of a polarized approach if Finn is very aggressive. But not knowing much about him makes me just lean towards my default, which is raise often for small. I know actually most people do something different, but it's approach that I like and I start with a check on the flop and go and going to probably call the turn, turn again unless he snaps checks so what is he flop betting that he snaps checks to turn with A little ten percent. See what it feels. Ah, so good that he shows up with queens. I sometimes you see them just randomly pot bat a jack. I can get a little bit of value there on the river from a jack. Uh, he could have turned a ten. Could have maybe pocket fives or something. Just don't think people. Are, uh, the recreational there is going to fold towards ten percent. So we sneak out a little bit more value. Could even have bet twenty percent. This is the same guy. Let's see if he pots again. Yep, 
in general, you will see me checking quite a lot towards recreationals. Uh, in general, recreationals, they have decent step tendencies on both flop and turn versus miss bets. Um, and they often just do random shit. So, giving rope to recreationals to let them do random shit, I think is usually a good strategy. These kind of things, for example, can sometimes happen. But therefore, I like to do quite a lot of checking. From a theory perspective, in this spot, actually, it also makes sense. We could actually consider a small lead again because he, he did bet depolarized with queens on the last hand, so he could actually have a jack here that we now lost value from. A pocket kings, deja vu. Could maybe thought that one through. Because I'm explaining that to you guys, but I instantly checked. Even though it was something I was taking in consideration. Here with the 4 3. I think this is a fine end to go for a check race. We have some backdoor, backdoor properties. We unblock all the bad folds. For example, let's say it's 9 10 off. So you would much rather check raise this hand than, for example, 4 10. Because you will have more bad folds now. And obviously, we have some uh, backdoor properties here with the 3 4 suited. And most likely, always, most likely, always, that doesn't make sense. Always betting the turn. And this makes very little to no sense, but I'm just going to give it credit. Here, I don't know who this guy is. Who's. Hmm, shall we go satisfy the GTO crowd? I'm throwing a little, uh, a little jam ski here. Why not, guys? Why not? We roll high. We are rolling high. Oh, shit. Oh, that's why you jam ace five, because we still have some equity. Five, five, no. Ace. Five, ace. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You have 33% and not even win one. We'll actually make a call here with pocket four simply because we're two and a BB deep. And in general, I want to be calling a little bit more when we're at this stack size. And I think then uh, we can also call pocket force. Probably just check call the flop here. He will have way more ace five. Mainly the ace five offsuit advantage is quite a problem. The ace eight offsuit advantage is quite a problem. Oh, he actually checks back. And a lot of his check back range probably contains a king or a weak ace. Gonna check and hope to get the showdown. The ace nine can check raise, check call, check fold first if you bet small, uh, big. The board is not running out any better. I think just checking down, I hope he has ace high is probably the best play. Same here. No, this guy just checked back jack seven suited three times. That's a guy versus which who we want to defend quite a lot of big blinds as we get to realize quite a lot of equity. We had a set. That's not too bad. Go for a check again when we have the two sixes. Um, by betting small, I sort of open myself up to this. Miracle fucking river. Um... 
You have to be a little bit careful around the turn as he will have king 10 off and I won't. So that's a dangerous advantage. He will also have 10 8 suited and I don't. So it's quite a dangerous turn there. The pocket sixes. I think his check back, check back range is going to contain a lot of sevens, eights, nines that I'm just going to try to get value from. I checked the turn, so he, if he did check back an air hand, he could now decide to bluff it. So I was going to go for like a small and juice, maybe if he still had air, he could bluff race the river. I think if he has two pair, he's still going to race. Doesn't have to worry that much about ace queen in my range. But fortunately, he had ace queen himself. Obviously, if we block there, we're never folding. Simply because he could have a worse hand sometimes, and we might have induced the bluff. But unfortunately, he had ace queen. Father, goddamn son of a bitch, fucking bastard, son of a fucking bitch. Why the cock? Fucking sucking hell does this happen every fucking time. And with the kings, even though it's such a good turn for his range, I think kings we should still always bet. Simply because it's less likely that he has the king 10, that's one. And if he does have the king 10, we still have equity. Same if, if he does have the 10 8, we still have equity. So, actually, let's start wrapping up the video. I think we got into quite some spots. Let's. Let's sit out. Next big blind. I hope you guys learned something. Quick reminder. Uh, let's try it. Why not? A bit loosey goosey. Little reminder. You still want to enroll in the mechanics of poker program, which is probably the most complete coaching program on the market. Last chance. Promotion ends end of July. 25% off. And a guaranteed seat. In all the goodness that's coming up in the 2.0 version of the mechanics. So go over to mechanicsofpoker.com or pokerambition.com to sign up. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, that's that of the video. I mean, nothing else to add. Terrible, terrible stuff. On the positive side, a lot of things for you to learn.